Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it, and then I could send you videos like this to your inbox as early as tomorrow morning. If you like this watch, you can buy it and 1,700 of its closest friends on thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing the 50th anniversary Breitling Navitimer Cosmonaut, a tribute to Scott Carpenter and his pioneering Aurora 7 Mercury flight, wearing a watch very much like this, built to his specifications. A little bit more on the history. The original Navitimer debuted in 1954 as a special for the American Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, and in the early 60s, NASA astronauts, led by Carpenter, actually precipitated the creation of a 24-hour version of the Navitimer that became the 809 Cosmonaut. And in 2012, this limited edition of 1,962 pieces launched to celebrate Carpenter's pioneering flight, as well as Breitling's pioneering role in space travel. Now, the watch on my wrist is a contemporary 43. It's easy to wear on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist. As you can see, the look is large, but that's all right on a pilot's watch. They're supposed to be large instrument style watches and legibility benefits as a result. Now, the timepiece does have a relatively slim profile considering all that lies within and the calculator bezel. 13.9 millimeters thick. It may not fit underneath the tightest of dress sleeves due to the shear of the case, but it will fit underneath any jacket cuff. Lug to lug, it's actually a reasonable 49 millimeters. I often say if your wrist is small for a man, which I define as 14 to 16 and a half, you're going to find that 50 millimeters or fewer lug to lug is ideal, and this watch at 49 fits the bill. The lug spacing is broad and contemporary, however, at 22 millimeters, so if you wish to accessorize your Navitimer Cosmonaut anniversary, you will find many 22 millimeter OEM and aftermarket options. You can see that the case profile is both handsome and traditional, with the mid-case being fairly thin, and the lugs themselves having a wonderful downward kick that wraps around the edge of the wrist. Now, when you look at the strap, it is almost intimidating in that it is so thick and stiff, and that would be a problem if it were pinned against the case, but it's not. There's total motion, full dexterity of strap, full articulation on both sides means you can pull it straight down and around the tight curve of a small wrist. So the strap is beautifully made. You can see it's thick cut with a folded edge and a sheer side. It has a contrasting aviator style stitch and of course leather calfskin is aviator standard and very traditional. There's also calfskin on the underside, a Breitling factory strap, as you can see, brand new and in excellent condition. It's matched with a simple Breitling signed pin buckle for easy on-the-fly adjustments. The case is all of high polish and it does feature a little bit of complexity, most notably the fluted bevel along the flank of the lug that swells as you move away from the case band, uh, the complexity of the faceting at the end of the lug, and then there's a small tuck underneath the case band as the case steps down to the screwed in case back. The watch does feature traditional pump style pushers and you can see them in relief as well as a push down crown, 30 meters water resistant. It's an aviator's watch, not a diver. And you can see the Scott Carpenter commemorative imagery on the case back, the image of the capsule as well as the mission number and a sun ray of the local star in our neighborhood emerging from behind the earth. You'll also note addition limite as it is one of 1,962. And finally, conversion factors outboard for temperature. Moving inboard on the dial side, let's get a little bit closer. There will be a wonderful loom shot at the end of this video. You can see that the calculator bezel is present and correct. You can use it for multiplication and division. It is a logarithmic scale in circular form and you can use it for calculating rapidly Anything from aviation metrics, if you are flying, and I was in the Navy, and I know they still train aviators with circular side rules to this day, more likely you'll use it to calculate the tip at a restaurant, and you'll find that once you get good with it, you'll actually move faster than your friends with their smartphones and calculators. Inboard, you can see highly calibrated, but it all makes sense. You actually can find special training devices online that will show you how to use this. Breitling also includes some instructions with the watch. It's a handsome 24-hour dial, and yes, the hour hand does move in one cycle per day, so one cycle per 24 hours. There's never any confusion regarding whether you're about to look at 9 o'clock in the morning, which you are, or 9 o'clock in the evening. The timepiece also features fully loomed Arabic numerals and a vintage-inspired 
red on white date wheel. Countersunk registers, you can see it is a invert panda with silver, almost champagne color, countersunk sub-registers for constant seconds as well as chronograph functions, and a counterweighted red chronograph seconds hand. Now the caliber B02, a manual wind variant of the B01 used in this watch, is very smooth. It is column wheel function selector so you can hear it. You can feel it. It's a very positive interaction. I would say it's on par with something like a Zenith El Primero in that respect, and the Hoyer 01. Those are all some of the best feeling chronograph pushers. I'd even put it up perhaps with something like a Longa Datagraph. That's a little bit more buttery, but the tactile quality, the pleasure you get from operating the chronograph is equal across both. You'll also note that the watch because it is a manual wind, it's a little bit thinner than a typical B01 caliber would be. What you're getting underneath that conversion factor commemorative case back is a 70 hour power reserve, the vertical clutch system, which allows you to run the chronograph continuously if you so choose with no wear and tear on the movement. It also, because it is a vertical clutch with no play, allows you to start the chronograph with no jump or stagger. You'll find those on lateral clutch chronographs like a 7750 or an El Primero. There's none of that here. There is hacking or stop seconds, so when you pull the crown, you do stop the whole affair, allowing precise synchronization to a reference time if you are a modern day space traveler or pilot. And of course, there is a quick set for rapidly cycling the date should you encounter an irregular length month. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer, so it is very precise. And the timepiece has an aesthetic versatility as a vintage styled watch in that you can wear it with almost anything, casual to sports to actual aviation attire or even office wear. This is an all-arounder in the strictest sense. You can see the Scott Carpenter 50th Anniversary Limited Edition Breitling Navitimer Cosmonaut and make it yours on our website. And we're back with the Brantling Navitimer Cosmonaut Scott Carpenter 50th Anniversary Special Edition. As you can see, this is an easy watch to wear and read in any light. It's actually perhaps less bamboozling and confounding by night than it is when you see the full calibrations of the bezel by day. See it with full boxes and accessories on our website.